Welcome to Andy's Garage. I'm Andy Phillips. Today we're back in the garage to resume work on the Kuntosh project. The goal for today is to get the front marking light and turn signals, get them to the right spec. As we saw in previous videos, they were too narrow. They need to be lined up to be a little bit wider. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modifying that and then adjusting the angle on the inner wall of that whole area there to make it more in line with the original Kuntosh. So that's what we're going to be working on today. And then if we have time, perhaps I'm going to go around the whole body and just touch up any body filler areas that still need a little bit of touch up, getting it ready for the final paint job. That way, next time we come back, we're just priming with a top coat of white primer, sanding it and painting it. So let's around here, head around here to the front. I'm going to show you what the, the current um, front turn signal um, marking lights, what they look like. So you can see how narrow they are, and then I'll show you a comparison with a real Kuntosh, and then we'll get into it. Looking at the replica I'm dealing with here, you can see the marking light is about an inch indented from the line of the headlight. And here on the real Kuntosh, you can see it's in line with it, with that crease right there, and that's what we're going to be doing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take a black marker. We're going to draw out where it needs to come to, and then we're going to go ahead and take a saw, cut that out, we're going to move the inner wall of this um, enclosure to the proper angle, and then I'm going to probably have to go ahead and take some fiberglass cloth and resin and rebuild it accordingly. Then we'll go ahead and shape it nice, clean it up, patch it up, prime it, make sure it looks good. And then we're also going to have to kind of route it out a little bit so you have this indentation so when the lens goes in there, it can recess in the way that it's supposed to. And then that'll pretty much wrap up this project. We'll make sure all that's good. And then all that's left, and we may even do it during this time. I need to see how much time we have. I just want to go over the whole body, patch up any little imperfections that have surfaced from other body work now that we've primed it. Once that's all done, then we can light sand the whole car down, do the top coat of white primer, light sand it again, start painting it, clear coating it, and then pretty much wrapping things up and then fine tuning a couple things left on the car, and then we're ready to register it, get it out on the road. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this up. And then we'll be back to take a look at it before we start cutting. So as you can see here, I drew it out. It needs to come all the way to there. And then on this side, it needs to come all the way to here. And of course, stuff like that will get patched. What I'm still not 100% is whether I want to cut this completely out and rebuild it. Or what I was going to do see if I can I was gonna cut here and then cut here pull that piece out and then use some of this to rebuild this side so if I can come down here I already have this beveled piece for the lens I could just move it to here cut that part out of it move it cut this flat piece out angle it properly and then just patch up around it and that would be the, the case also here on the other side Let's see here. On this one, too, it would be the same thing. You can see right here. Just cut out this wall, bend it more on the angle, and then patch up accordingly. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. What's the best case scenario so I can pretty much salvage everything without having to remake the whole thing? After going through everything and kind of determining the best way to do this. Instead of cutting this out, as I was planning on, I'm just gonna go ahead, we're gonna use this router. I've already adjusted the routing bit to the right depth. We're gonna take the router and just really continue this indentation out to here. Once we have that all routed out, then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece, that, and here, and then we'll tilt it and fill it and adjust it at that point, but I think that'll be the the least amount of work and the least cutting and modifying this thing. Because if we just follow this line with the routing, we already have, because this is actually very thick, the body right here. So we have we have a lot of fiberglass right there that, that we can route into without causing any issues. And then once we have that routed out, like I said, then we'll cut this piece out here, just the, this side wall right here. And then we'll angle it more to fit. And then we'll probably have to put some fiber resin and um, cloth here on the back to kind of strengthen it, and then we'll just use some body filler to patch it up as needed, sand that down, then we have to kind of fix, there's some 
little chip right here. The other one has some flaws. We'll get all that fixed up, sand it nice and smooth. We'll prime it so we can see how it looks, and then that'll wrap up this, this part of the project, and then pretty much wrap up any body work besides any small touch-ups before paint. Everything has been cleaned off. You can see how I brought the line here, went all the way up there. Had a couple little areas where the, the router bit kind of deviated a little bit. But after I cut this out, and you can see I drew the black line where it's going to be cut, the sidewall. And then right here was the old, the old lens came to about here, and then it rested on this edge and then the side. So we're going to get rid of that and then tilt this back to here and then patch it up. And then once we do that, I'll go ahead and patch up these little indentations where uh, things kind of got a little bit out of whack. We'll smooth that out real good. Let's take a look at the other side. And here's this one. This one actually turned out a little bit better. But uh, if we come here, you can see right here, I kind of nicked that little corner. So that needs to be patched. We had this chip that was already there that has to be taken care of. We'll clean all this junk out of here, but you can see it goes up here, cuts over, and then here's the line where I need to cut that. So let's cut that out so then we can angle it properly, start patching it, patch these areas here, and then prime it. Both sides have been cut out, as you can see here. And let's get a close-up. I'll show you what we're going to do next. Here's the side wall that was cut out here. And you can see there the new indentation where the lens will then sit between here and here. So we've gained approximately probably about three-quarters of an inch on each side, which is the correct the correct width now because it is supposed to go from this indentation here and you can't see it too well because the primer is dull but there's an indentation here that follows up to the headlight that's supposed to be in line with it and then this side here is also supposed to be in line with the headlight there so now we're good so what I'm going to do next is we're going to use this as much as we can but we're going to go ahead and put some fiber, re uh, fiber resin and cloth in there to kind of build a little bit of a foundation to build onto and then we'll mount this in there and then use some body filler 
to kind of fill up any gaps and shape it properly once it hardens. Then we'll go ahead and sand it real nice, clean it, fix all these little flaws in there, and then we'll be ready to prime it. And the same is on this side here, but you can see a little bit of this bubbling up because the former owner, it looks like he had like a reflective vinyl, which is incorrect. It's supposed to be like a white reflective paint that, that goes in there. So I got to clean all that out, smooth it. And then we'll, like I showed earlier, we'll patch that. But you can see that's nice and clean. Same thing as what we talked about. And then once that's done and the car is actually painted, then this will be painted that white reflective. And then we'll have the turn signals and marking lights in here. And then we'll have the lens there. And then you'll have the high beam and low beam headlights here, which go inside this pop-up. I'll show you. So that'll come up like that. And that still needs to be finished up a little bit. And then we'll connect the motors and all that. So it's coming along. We're now on day two. So uh, let's go ahead and get a close-up. I'll show you what we're working on. And uh, we'll continue moving forward with this project. Just finished epoxying in this piece here with the uh, JB Weld compound. And you can see where I cut it off here. And then we took the angle here. Routed this out, as we saw already, right here to the edge so it's in line with the pop-up headlight. So that'll be all finished in here. The sidewall is now moved over uh, approximately about a quarter to a half an inch right there. And what I did is I just um, I put the compound, which has a 15-minute dry time on it because this is um, the higher PSI version. So what I did is I just took a glue gun and just put a little glob of glue here and here to hold it in place while that dries. That's almost dry. But let's head over here to the other one, and I'll show you what we did here this one as well. And you can see right here, same thing. You can see right there. This one's still drying, still a little bit tacky, but it's almost completely cured there. But you can see the glob of glue here and here holding that. And then once that's done, you can see how this is going to be opened. So we have this side that was right. This one goes more on an angle, and same thing here. It's in line with the pop-up headlight. So once this dries properly, we're going to go ahead and remove those globs of glue. Then what I'm going to do is put a fiber cloth mesh behind this on both sides, let that dry with some resin, and then we'll take the fiberglass body filler, fill in these areas here, make it nice and straight, the edge nice and angled, sand it down smooth, touch up any imperfections that need to be touched up in here, and then we'll go ahead and prime that, and that will be all ready to go. And you can see right there, that's the mount where the turn signal and parking light bulb where it comes in the lens because it kind of bumps out. That's where it mounts right there. You get to it from underneath to tighten that. But we're coming along. You can see there it's looking decent. And then coming here on this one, same thing there. So once this dries, we'll be back to put the fiber cloth, body filler, prime it, and then that'll wrap up this time working on it. All the fiber cloth has been put in behind on this one and if we come over here on this side same thing right there so I'm going to go ahead and take a heat gun to speed up the drying process because the temperature is a little bit colder than uh, 75 degrees which is what you're supposed to be doing it in so we're going to heat it up and then we'll be back to start putting the body filler in it and shaping it everything is fully dried in here and you can see right there the fiber cloth, a little bit there, which I'm going to trim out. But we have it in there. We have it down in here. And if I come around back, you can hear it. That's hard. The resin has finally dried. It's a little colder in here than it should be. So I had to use an infrared heater as well as a heat gun in order to uh, keep it heated up. But let's go on to the other side, and I'll show you that one as well. It is looking really good. So if we come here. Same thing there, you can see the fiber. And then what I did is I put a coat of resin here where I routed it to smooth it out. And then we'll, you can see it's a little jagged right there, but we'll smooth that out. But if we come up here, here's the line for the pop-up headlight. Boom, right in line with that. We'll have the nice black trim, it'll look great. And you can see down in there as well. It's looking nice. And this is not for any kind of structural purpose. The only reason why I put this fiber cloth back here is so that way when we put the body filler in here and along in here we have that foundation for it to lay again so that way it doesn't you know with any stress doesn't crack or fall through or break so that way we have this foundation so we can really put it in nice and thick and make it nice and solid 
So I'm going to go ahead and start applying that, and then after that, we'll be able to sand it and then give the primer on it. So let, I'll go ahead and get that rolling, and we'll be back. Just finished right here. Gave the first coat. We're going to go ahead and let that dry real good, and then I'll be back to go over it. You can see there's still a little bit of indentations there because we had to really work it in. There we go. Clear that up. So let that dry. Then we'll be back to give a top coat, smooth it out real good, and then after that dries, we'll sand it and prime it. I just finished putting the final coat, you can see here, obviously needs to be sanded still. But if we look, everything is all shaped up nicely. So we've got, what I did is I, I did a couple coats, sanded in between, and then kept filling it in to build it up to where it needed to be. So we're letting this dry now, and then I'll be back to sand it so that we can get ready to prime it. But you can see how it's looking there right in line with the headlights, turning out really nice. Let's head over to this side. This side here, on the passenger side is actually almost completely done because I've already given it all the coats, sanded them, and then we saw little flaw back here and along that edge right there were a little bit off, so I just hit them a little bit, but all the rest of this has already been sanded down nicely. So once that dries, we'll sand this as well, and then we'll be back to go ahead and hit, hit it with the primer. And then that'll wrap up this video. I did want to take some time to do some work on touching up some little flaws on the fenders from the work I did previously, but it doesn't look like time's going to allow that. So I'm going to go ahead and let these dry, sand them, and then we'll be back to apply the primer. Everything is done. We've gone ahead and put the masking in all the areas here so we can start spraying it. On this side too, everything looks good. So let's go ahead and hit it with the primer and uh, wrap this up. I'm just going to use just a regular primer sealer. I've used primer filler in the past, uh, but for this we're just doing just the sealer. Also got to do some of the spots here where we kind of nicked it when we were doing the work on it. We'll let this first coat dry and then we'll come back and hit it with the second one. Let's head off to the other side and do that one while we wait. We'll let this one dry as well. Everything is done, being painted and also the second coat. Let's go ahead and let it dry and then we'll be back to take a look at it. So far it's looking really good. Some minor little flaws which will be cleaned up when we do the actual the top coat of primer and prep it for the final paint. But the main thing was just getting these rebuilt and everything um, primed and you know pretty much as close to perfect as we could get it. So we're going to let them sit and then we'll be back to take a look at it and wrap this up. Here's the passenger side. Turned out really good here where we built it all up. I'll get a close up here. Let's get the light on. And there it is. You can see the indentation there where the lens will lay in there. Have a little bit of some scarring in here from the old 
um, with the old owner head going on. We'll fix that before we actually paint it. But the main thing was getting that set, so that looks good. Let's head off to the other side and check that one out. And this one turned out good too. A little bit of an indentation up in that corner, which I'm not concerned about because when the lens goes in there, the black seal is going to be in that area anyway, so that'll be covered. And then same thing here, a little bit of scarring that we'll clean up before we paint it. Other than that, what we actually did as far as the widening of it turned out really good. I'll kind of pan back and show it. You can see it's in line there, the width of it. And just ignore that pop-up headlight being out of alignment because uh, that will be corrected um, when we put the motors in. Right now it's just in place but not really aligned. But you can see at least they follow the crease as it should. And on this one also, you can see that. Okay, that pretty much wraps up this time here in the garage, working on the Countach project. I was hoping to have some time to get around to some of the flaws that we need to fix, but that didn't happen. So the next time in the garage, we'll go around the whole vehicle and correct any little bit of flaws, get them all smoothed out and kind of primed up as we get it ready for the white top coat of primer and then ready for paint. So this was the last of the kind of bodywork projects needed for this car. So we're moving along slower than I was hoping, but still moving along. So that wraps up this time here. I hope this video was enjoyable for you. Please send me any questions, comments. I would love to hear from you. And as always, I appreciate all the support. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.